gonna go into effect and we're gonna hit side to side. And now our lights are going side to side. What's up, bros? Welcome back to another DJ Tips and Tricks video. In today's video, we are doing the long-awaited how I program my DJ lights using nothing but an iPad. Actually, I lie. We don't use nothing but an iPad. We use this little device right here called ADJ's Airstream DMX Bridge. And essentially what this does is it sends out a DMX signal. As you guys can see here, there's a DMX out. This device then acts as a modem that this iPad can connect to, allowing you to control your lights via DMX using your iPad. This has been a heavily, heavily requested the video by you guys watching out there and today I'm gonna attempt to answer all the questions that you guys have on this little device also keep in mind that I did do a review and a setup of this device already if you haven't seen it it's gonna be listed up in the card above as well in the description of this video additionally if you like to grab yourself a nice carrying case or buy the Airstream DMX I'm gonna leave you guys links on where you can buy a case and where you can buy the Airstream DMX all right without further ado Let's get started on this DMX video. All right, first things first. I got a ton of questions about this in my last video that I made on the Airstream DMX. Uh, I thought it was a stupid question, but then I realized there are no stupid questions, only stupid people. People were wondering why my iPad was plugged in. This iPad is plugged in because it's about to die, and also I need to screen record what I'm filming right now. No, your iPad does not need to be connected. If it's charged, you're good. You don't need to to have it connected. Hey, this is an ADJ product. Does that mean it can only control ADJ products? No, that does not mean you can only control ADJ products. Essentially, think of this as just a DMX controller. Nothing to it but having the faders on a screen as opposed to having analog faders on a traditional DMX controller. So you can control lights of any brand. That includes Chave, Eliminator, uh, and all the other Chinese knockoff brands that you may have have. And speaking of Chinese knockoff brands, I have this cheap LED park can that I'm going to program for you guys so that you guys can see how to program a light that you don't have the manual for and how to program a light that's not a DJ. This is a perfect example because this light has no brand. This is a total knockoff light that you can get on Amazon for about 30 bucks. It's nothing crazy, but they do get the job done if you're broke and don't have money to spend on lights. I'll link these down in the description below as well. So let's get started with this. First thing we need to do is we need to come out of our Airstream DMX, come out of here, and we need to go into our light. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my iPad. You should see it on your screen now. If you don't have the app downloaded, all you have to do is go on the App Store, search up the Airstream DMX, and there you guys see it. You press open, and you'll have it. Now, as you guys saw, there was a warning message that I glossed over, forgot I'm filming this video. It just basically says that I am not connected. But we need to go ahead and connect to the Airstream DMX bridge. Gotta make sure our bridge is on. I'm gonna shut off Wi-Fi, turn Wi-Fi back on, and there we see it now. If this is your first time setting up the Airstream DMX bridge, the password is going to be Airstream all in lowercase letters. So keep that in mind if this is your first time setting it up. All right, so there you guys can see, I am now connected to the Airstream DMX. I'm gonna go ahead and open up our app. Now we can get started programming our light. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna patch in a light. And I'll show you guys how to do that. So we're in our fixture section. We're gonna go ahead and press the bars up at the top. We're gonna go into patching. And then as you guys can see, there's no fixtures patched in. You can patch in multiple different fixtures. Let's go ahead and go into fixture number one. Now, as you guys can see, there's a ton of different brands that you can program. Sometimes the lights are actually already within the app itself. And when the lights are already in here, it's super easy to program. I'll show you guys how to do that later on with the light that is on the iPad. But this is a generic Parkan light, so we're going to go ahead and type in a generic profile. Basically, what we do with this is we're just telling the app how many channels we need for our fixture. It doesn't matter what type of fixture you have, the only thing 
thing you need to know is how many channels you have. If you don't have the manual for your fixture, a good starting point for something like a par can is usually around 12. Sometimes it's way less than that. It depends on how many colors your par can can achieve. This par can can only achieve three colors, red, green, blue. So I'm assuming that it's way less than 12, but it's okay having dummy channels. So I'm gonna go ahead and program 12 channels for this light. Go ahead and press patch. We're gonna go back into our light. And as you guys can see, it gave me the address number one. Right there under 12 channels, it gave me address number one. Additionally, what we can do is we can rename this. I'll go ahead and type in China. And when you figure out what your faders do, you can rename your faders. So there you guys see channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four, channel five, blah, 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 blah. These can be renamed when you figure out what each of those faders do. If you have the manual that came with your light, it's super easy to figure out what each of the faders do. For this particular light we don't have the manual so we're gonna go ahead and try to figure out what each of the faders does keep in mind that some lights do have different channel modes some lights will let you have six channel mode 12 channel modes 18 channel mode the more channels that you want to use with your light the more that you're gonna be able to control within the light but that also means that it's going to be harder to program because you have enabled more functions to be controlled within the light if you're new to DMX I recommend using the smallest DMX number that your light allows. Now, this is a pretty cheapy brand. I don't know how many channels it takes up. I'm assuming it takes up maybe 10 at most. I went ahead and programmed 12. I'm assuming that those other channels are going to be dummy channels. Additionally, we have to make sure that we have the right DMX address on our light. So, we're going to set it to number one since that's the address that our iPad gave us. Now, let's go to our app. As you guys can see, it's titled China. I renamed it. We're going to go ahead and now go into to channel so let's start bringing each of these faders up until our light starts reacting so let's go ahead and bring up number one as you guys can see nothing happened to the light it's still dead let's go ahead and bring up number two so now we had a response from the light as you guys can see the light turned red lets us know that channel number two means red now we can go back and bring down number one and see if that has any effect on the color red so if we bring that down one we can see our light starts to dim so we need to have fader one up in order for our light to work because that's our dimmer so if we bring this all the way up there you guys see it's fully red which is just our dimmer so now we know that channel number one was our dimmer and channel number two is the color red if we keep going we're gonna find out all the colors that are in this light so if we turn up channel three we see that it's green. If we turn up channel four, we see that it's blue. We figured all that out just by messing around with the faders. Now let's see what channel five does. Now we get strobe, so that means this is our strobe, otherwise known as our shutter. The more I bring it up, the faster it starts strobing, and if I bring it down, the strobe slows down. Let's go ahead and bring that back down. I'm gonna go ahead and dim it so it doesn't blow out the, the camera. Let's try channel six. And there you see channel 6 is just more or less a random pattern. So now we know that this is pretty much auto mode. Channel 6 is auto mode. If we mess around with it, it's going to give us different effects. Lastly, let's try channel 7. And it seems like channel 7 doesn't give us any reaction at all. Same for number 8. No reaction. Number 9. No reaction, number 10, no reaction, number 11, no reaction, and obviously 12, no reaction. So now we've determined that this is only a six channel light. So now we can go back to our light, we can go to patching, we can press the little eye icon. Uh, I actually forgot to press save on the name, so I'm gonna go ahead and rename this China. Channel one, remember channel one was our dimmer. Channel two was red. Channel three was green. Channel four, blue. Number five, shutter, or some people call this strobe. Channel six was auto program. And we also tried out the other faders, but we knew they were dead faders, so those faders aren't gonna do anything. You could totally delete this and then just program it as a six channel light, but that's just adding extra work to your workload. You can also do it right from here. For the purposes of this video, we're just gonna go ahead and leave it alone. Let's go ahead, click our light, and there you guys see all our faders are down. They're also renamed, our light is off. Now we know what everything does. So let's go ahead and bring up the dimmer. We're gonna go ahead and do a blue strobe light. So we're gonna bring blue all the way up, 
and we're gonna do a blue strobe so there you guys see a blue strobe add a little bit of green add a little bit of red this is called color mixing now on the camera it might look like white because it's mixing all the colors together this is a cheapy light so you can't see it very well I'll show you with a better light in just a few short moments if we want to intensify that we can bring it all the way up there you guys see now we figured out how to program any light with the Airstream DMX even though it's not from a DJ all right so this is one of my favorite lights of all time there's different versions of it but this is my absolute favorite one because it's a metal housing which makes it more robust it can really take a beating and it'll last you for a long ass time this is the 5p hex from American DJ. Hex lets us know how many colors this light can achieve. Hex meaning six, it does six colors. Red, green, blue, white, UV, and amber. So we can program all those colors within our Airstream DMX app. So let's go ahead and start programming this bad boy right here. This one also has different channel modes. Like I said, the more channel modes that you add to a fixture, the harder it is to program because you're enabling more features within the light. We used 12 channels on the last light, which means on our Airstream DMX, the next available channel is going to be the one above 12, which is 13, everybody. That's right. So we're going to go ahead and go to channel 13. Uh, next thing that I also want to denote is that you can change how many channels you have. So I'm going to go ahead and do 12. I don't need 12. I don't use all the features that this light has, but just to show you guys how to do it. Let's go ahead and patch in a new fixture. We're not going to be using the China one now. We're going to go into patching, fixture number two, and we're going to search up 5P. So there you guys see the 5P shows up. It shows up how many different channels it has. So this just makes it easier as far as titling everything. It'll do it for you and it lets you know what each fader does. They basically already took the time to program this light. It is an ADJ light. There's a ton of other different manufacturers in here like Chauvet, Elation. But like I said before, even if a light is not in here, it doesn't really matter. Also, as you guys can see here, you can select the quantity. So if you want to program four of these lights, you can do that but keep in mind that if you have multiple of the same lights you can just use the same DMX address on all the lights and they'll all do the same thing now if you want each light to do different things then you would have to program a different quantity just because if you want to have one light red and the other light blue then you do need to separate them so you would set up two different lights I personally like having all my lights do the same thing if they're the same thing so I'm gonna go ahead and hit quantity one and even if I have an additional one, I'll just set it to DMX address 13 and it'll do the same thing as this one. We're gonna go ahead and exit out. There you guys see, I have a 5P hex, it's 12 channels. Let's go into our fixture section. Press 5P hex. And now there you guys see that the order is a little bit different. Each light is gonna have different orders as far as faders go. So not always your dimmer is gonna be channel number one. Two things to always remember when programming light. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna bring your dimmer all the way up strobe all the way up and then you add your color so i'm going to go ahead and add white here and there you guys see our light is turned white beautiful so let's go ahead and save this white it's fader number four so i'm going to save it as scene four the way i do that is i press save on the top right corner on channel four i'm going to title this white also the button label. I hate the fact that it makes you do it twice. It's a bit annoying, but it's something that you have to do. So there you guys see it. My scene name is white and my button label is white as well. You press save, done. So now if we go into the scene section of our light, press that here, you guys see we now have a button titled white. If I turn that off, our light turns off. If I trigger it on, our light turns on. This allows you to just trigger buttons. So when I'm actually working at gigs, I program a ton of different scenes, which I'll show you in just a little bit, and I just trigger which scene I want, depending on the mood that I want, depending on what I want my lights to be doing. Now, I'm gonna do that for every single color. It's the same way, super easy to do. Make sure our light is selected. Move to channels. This time, I wanna program a red, and then I'm gonna make sure that my dimmer and strobe is all the way up. I'm gonna save this. Channel number one, it's gonna be red. Make sure you change the button label. I hate that part, but I always forget to do it. And now we are good to go. Now we have a red 
and we have a white. So I've programmed every single color. Hex fixture, we have our red, boom, green, boom, blue, boom, white, boom, UV, boom, amber, boom. Now keep in mind that you can also do color combinations. You can combine colors to achieve different colors on our light. One of the things you do want to make sure is you want to make sure that solo is not turned on so that you're able to trigger multiple buttons at the same time. So let's go ahead and program something like a pink. Uh, we can do red. We add some blue to that and now we have a purple. But if we add UV, we can really kick it up a notch. You guys probably can't tell on the screen, but if you guys can tell on my face, we have a really hot pink happening right now. If I trigger it back here, you guys can see we have a hot pink there. We can save this so that way we don't have to trigger three buttons for the next time. So let's go ahead and go back to our channels, save this, and I'm going to save this as number 13 here. And I'm going to save this as hot pink saved okay and now next time we click this it's gonna just go ahead and turn into our hot pink so there you guys see hot pink on and off on and off on and off you can do multiple combinations if we do green and blue we get an aqua color so let's go ahead and save that aqua color 14 aqua now if we go to our light we have aqua color there aqua aqua aqua, aqua. So this right here is an element hex fixture from a DJ now because these are a DJ lights they're both par cans they both do the same thing it's a hex fixture these can actually be controlled on the same DMX channel this is not always going to be true though however I know this works because I've looked at the manuals and I know that 12 faders on this is the same 12 faders on this so if I set this to DMX address 13 and 12 channel mode it's gonna react the same way as this par can here which is what I'm gonna do right now I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on this is a fully battery powered light we're gonna make sure we are on DMX address 13 because this is a wireless light you're gonna need to check the RC channel so I'm gonna scroll through this light until I get to RC and there I see that it's on RC channel 14 now let's go back to our iPad and make sure that we have RC turned on and that we're also on RC 14 top left section allows us to toggle our settings now the wireless DMX protocol that American DJ uses is called Wi-Fi this is one of the only things that you do need ADJ products to do. If you want wireless DMX, you're going to have to get Wi-Fi products. This won't work with other brands. So as you guys can see, Wi-Fi is enabled. Wi-Fi just means RC. Same thing that was on here. It's just that they don't have enough space to write Wi-Fi. It's enabled. We have Wi-Fi channel 14, which means that we're going to be sending out wireless DMX signal to channel number 14. Now, if we go to our fixtures, I mentioned before that this light and this light are the same same except this one has a battery and it has wireless signal and I'll show you that if we patch it if we go to patching we type in element there you guys see 12 channels we patch one now I already have this set to channel 13 it's telling me to put it on channel 25 the only reason I patched it is just to show you guys that it's the same so if I click on the eye scroll down there you guys see that the channel faders all do the same thing as long as our dimmer and strobe and colors are all in the same place we can set these to the same address so there you guys see the channels for the element and if we go to the 5p scroll down those are the same channels so i have both of these on dmx channel 13 and we already programmed some scenes. This makes our work way easier. We don't have to go in and program it twice. If I went ahead and programmed this light individually and set it to the DMX address that it gave me, 25, it would double my workload because I would have to go in and program all the scenes that I already made with this light right here. But because they're the same, if I go ahead and toggle red, there you guys see that this light is also going to turn red as well. This works our same for our combination color. So our aqua color is also going to be programmed. Hot pink is also going to be programmed. White is also going to be programmed. And now let's start kicking it up a bunch. Let's say that this is our up lights for the room and this is our lights for our facade. Let's say we want to create a strobe effect. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into 5P hex. I have my white turned on so it already knows where the faders are at. Now the strobe section all the way up means wide open. If we bring it back, it's gonna start flickering. I personally like setting it to around 95. That gives me a pretty nice effect. This might actually be a little bit much. If I wanna save this scene so that I can just toggle it on later, I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. I'm gonna go ahead and hit seven. And I'm gonna toggle this as strobe. 
Make sure to change the button label too. Strobe. And save, save, okay. Now we want that shut off. So now let's pretend we're at a gig. Let's say you're playing a slow dance. Boom, getting all the couples out there dancing. The room is red, your facade or totems are red. And now it's time to crank it up. It's peak hour. Dope EDM record is playing. The beat is coming. You shut off all the lights and then the beat drops and boom, you hit that strobe effect and all your lights are changing color. Now let's say you wanna have your lights changing colors just throughout the night. So now we're going to program an effect. The way we're going to do this is we're going to hit our 5P hex. Keep in mind that it's controlling both of these lights. We're now going to go into our channels and the only thing I'm going to turn up is our dimmer and our strobe. Now I'm going to go ahead and go into effects there at the bottom. We're going to go to our settings and we're going to do a color effect. So the cool thing about this app is that it creates effects for you. There you guys see a color spectrum. That's the reason why I didn't toggle any colors because I wanted to cycle through multiple different colors. So I'm going to go ahead and press play on this and there you guys see the color spectrum starts at red and then it starts working its way up through different colors. Then we go into a green, blue and magenta and then we go back into red. I'm going to go ahead and just bring this all the way up so that way our speed is faster. So now we have a nice color changing upbeat effect. We're gonna go ahead and save this. We're gonna name the effect color and we're gonna name it color. Boom, boom, okay? So now we've saved this effect. It now remembers that when I toggle that effect, it's gonna cycle through colors. Remember I have my dimmer and strove up. If I go ahead and press colors, Go to my channels. Now we can save the effect as a scene. So I'm gonna go into channels, save. I'm gonna go into channel nine. And I'm just gonna title this color. Same thing for the button. Mm -mm. Color, done, save, okay, boom. So now when I press color, you guys see that it's gonna go through different colors. Same thing, we have our strobe, we have our colors. Now let's take it up a step. Let's say we want to now do a strobe, but we want to have it multiple different colors. We have our blinking strobe, just white. Let's go ahead and do a color strobe. So I have my colors there, going back into channel, and now we're not going to mess with the effect. We're just going to let this effect ride, and now we're going to bring this down to 95. We're going to save this, channel 8, and this is going to be color strobe save so now same thing we're peak hour at our event drop is coming on a hot edm track and we drop boom color strobe the room is changing different colors our facade is changing different colors everything is ready to rock if i just want a white strobe i can trigger the white strobe if i want a color strobe i can trigger this strobe. and if i just want to fade i can just do this color all right shout out to everybody who's made it to this portion of the video it's now time for the more advanced pro level section of this video so slap that like button if you're enjoying the content so far let's see if we can get a thousand likes i know we can do it it's time to do moving heads in front of me i have the adj focus spot 2x lights love these little guys super powerful super bright super compact they're awesome great little lights for your light shows and this is what i'm going to be programming today showing you guys how to do spotlights how to do strobes how to do scenes all that stuff that i showed you on the other lights I'm gonna be showing you how to do them on this lights right here. Now, these are not wireless lights like the one I showed you here, this element here. This is a wireless battery powered light. So you will need power and you will need a DMX cable to daisy chain these lights together. Daisy chaining is a industry term meaning linking lights together. Now here's a little pro tip and it's something that you guys have heard me talk about. If you have a light that's wireless, that receives wireless, wireless DMX signal, then you can use that light as a receiver to send out signal to another light. So essentially something that you could do is you could place this inside of a totem, set the totem across the room, and then just run a DMX cable out of this light to your moving heads. And essentially what you're doing is you're creating a totem that you can place anywhere in the room. So I'll demonstrate that now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of this light here 
and I'm gonna send a wireless DMX signal to this light here. Now obviously you only get one out out of each light, so if you have multiple of these, you can do the same for another totem. I only have one light with me right now, so for this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and daisy chain across from here to here. But like I said, if you had another one of these lights, all you had to do is just come out of that light into here, which is what I do when I'm actually at my event. One last thing I do wanna mention before we power it, now you can see that our Airstream has nothing coming out of it. This is how it looks like when I'm at my events. I don't have any cables coming out of it. This speeds up my cleanup. So I love having Wi-Fi fixtures. While the modems are resetting, I'm gonna go ahead and take my tablet. We're gonna go into our patching and we're gonna add a new fixture. So we're gonna go ahead and do fixture number four and we're gonna look up focus. So as previously mentioned, these are the focus spot two. These are the newer ones, they're the focus spot two X's, but it doesn't matter, they're gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and patch them as focus spot twos with 16 channels. Now, like I mentioned before, if you want the lights doing the exact same thing, then you can program them on the same DMX address. For moving heads, this changes we can't have them on the same address we well actually we can but they're gonna be doing the same thing and we don't want that because when we do something like a spotlight we don't want one light going to the right and the other one going to the right as well we need to have them opposite of each other and in order to do that we have to program them individually so we are going to have to program two lights and set them to different addresses so that way we can tell one light I need you to go to the right and the other light I need you to go to the left this way we can achieve things like a spotlight and we can actually properly light the dance floor now we got our two numbers so now we have 37 and 53 so now I'm gonna have to go around and make sure that these lights are set to channels 37 and 53 and they're set to 16 channel mode perfect we're now ready to control our lights and it's super easy to do it's the same thing like we did with the other ones I'm gonna show you guys what happens when we toggle two lights at the same time so I have focus spot one which is this one focus spot two which is this one and if we go to channel first thing we always want to do we want to bring our dimmer and shutter up let's go ahead and bring dimmer up and shutter up and that turns on our light there you guys see we're now getting some movement now this is where it gets tricky programming the lights so that they do different things as you guys can see here if I tilt these up they're gonna tilt up together boom if I pan them they're gonna pan together these got really fast motors, by the way. But we don't want that. Let's say we're doing a spotlight right now. So we want to have each light go over there. And what you're going to notice is that they're not going to be properly centered if we do that. So let's go ahead and press pan. Let's fix our tilt. Pan them around. Okay. So what I want to do, if I want to pin spot something, if I wanted to hit that clock over there, I'm going to go ahead and go to fixtures. I'm only going to select one and now we have to program them individually. So let's go to channels. We're going to go pan right there and then we're going to tilt until we hit the clock there. All right, so now let's do the other one. We're going to select the second focus spot. We're going to move it just so that it's angled properly and we're going to bring it down. Boom, and now they're angled perfectly. As you guys can see, the values are different. We have 208 and 42, and if we go back to the other one, we have 219 and 34. So this is exactly what I was talking about when you want to have individual controls. They're spotlighting the same thing, but they are at different positions from each other, so the numbers are going to change. Now we want to save this, and we're going to go ahead and title this our spotlight. So let's pretend we spotlight the dance floor. Done, and save 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 successful we go into scenes toggle spotlights off toggle them on Woo! they kind of hit each other there now let's say we want to program so that our facade is also a color let's say they chose a light blue I'm gonna go ahead and add blue plus white so on this light there you guys see I have a light blue my spotlights are on I'm gonna go ahead and override this I'm gonna override my spotlight with the new color override it okay and now, if I shut off the spotlight and I trigger it back on, my up lights are all going to change light blue and our moving heads are going to toggle the center of the dance floor, which in this scenario is going to be our clock spotlight on. Boom. 
We have our light blue and we have our spotlight going there. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the strobe. So now I want these to also start strobing. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our fixtures. We're gonna make sure we have both of them selected into channel mode and now we're gonna mess with our shutter. We're gonna bring our shutter to around 120, mess around with it until you get an effect that you would like. And we're gonna go ahead and save this scene and we're gonna override our original strobe. Save, overwrite. You wanna make sure that before you save, all your lights are doing the effect that you want. If you forgot to do one, then you're gonna have to restart. Now that we've saved it, we can shut this off. Additionally, if we wanna do a color strobe, like I mentioned, we have our color strobe here, but this one isn't programmed yet so we're gonna go ahead and go back to our spotlight toggle off our blue toggle off our white that shuts it off and we're gonna toggle a color strobe we're gonna go back into our fixtures make sure our two lights are selected and now we want to adjust the color wheel so there you guys see color on our lights these we can't program together the only thing that we can't program together is the movement so we're gonna find a color until it starts changing. We're now gonna bring down our shutter to around 125 again. Let's do that. Boom, and now we have our lights going here and there. We're gonna go ahead and press save, and now we're gonna override color strobe, save, and save. And now we can shut this off. Everything comes off, and as soon as we toggle it, Boom, we have a color strobe going. Now let's program a fresh scene from scratch. So I'm gonna go ahead and program a love scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle my 5P hex. I'm gonna bring up my dimmer. I'm gonna bring up my strobe and I'm gonna add red. Boom, I have red there. Alternatively, with this app, you do have a color spectrum. So if I bring down that red and hit that rainbow up above, I can program the colors as I choose from this rainbow section here. This is something that's pretty cool to show to clients if you're at a bridal show or if you want to have your bride and groom choose their up light color. You can just say, hey, pick a color and they can literally see the room transform right in front of their face. I don't really use this too much because I like color mixing a little bit better than picking the color this way, but it is an option that's there. As you guys can see, it adds the values for you. Now, let's go back. I just want a red right now. Back to our fixtures. We're going to hit our focus spots one and two. Bring up our dimmer. We're going to bring up our shutter. We're going to bring up our color until we get a red. Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Okay, now we have a red. Now I'm going to move these back there. So now I have to take individual control of each light. Tilt up and just a little bit more until we're there. Next light, we want to tilt, tilt, tilt. A little too much right there. And we want to tilt down. You do have this plus and minus, which makes it easier to get to the exact position that you want. Now, I also want to cover a little bit more of the dance floor with this one. So I want to spread this out and give it a prism. So I'm going to look for a circular prism that's going to cover more area on the dance floor. So we're going to spread it out. And there you guys see at 20, it gave me a prism. I want to do the same for the other one. I'm going to move this one to 20, give it a prism. Now I want to add some movement so that our moving head start toggling around the room giving us a nice effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure both of my lights are selected. I'm going to go into effects. But this time I don't want to program a color effect. I want to program a pan and tilt effect. You can either draw an effect. So if you start drawing and messing around like if I draw a star there, you guys will see that this will follow. I press play and it's gonna do that effect. I can also mess with the speed. So now it's gonna do that effect that I just drew super fast. I don't like that though. So I'm gonna go and do a circle. It makes a perfect circle for you. And I'm gonna have these slow down, slow down guys, slow down. So I'm gonna fix the speed. It's a slow song that's playing. And now this circle, I'm gonna find it where it hits the dance floor. So. Think of this gray as an axis of where your lights are. So right there, I'm getting closer to the dance floor. Go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so that they cover a wider area. And I'm gonna slow it down just cause I don't want it to go that fast. So there you guys see, I now have a red room. I'm gonna go ahead and save the effect. We have to save the effect first and then we have to save the scene. So we're gonna go ahead and do a uh, slow Circle. Keep in mind, the effect only saves the movements of the lights. It doesn't save the colors of the lights. So now we have that saved. So now if I toggle this, they'll do a slow circle. And if I go back to my channel, 
I can go ahead and save and I'm gonna title this Red Room. And we save, okay, we're good to go. So now, if I toggle everything off, and let's say I'm out on the dance floor, spotlight is on me right here. I'm out on the dance floor, I'm saying, everybody, it's time to open up our dance floor. Please grab a dance partner as we open up our dance floor. Usually, I always start with a slow song, so I'll have my roadie, my assistant, trigger the Red Room as soon as he drops the track. So a slow song starts playing, and then we switch over to a slow track. So now the room turns entirely red. It goes from blue to red, and we have a nice scan of red light going across the room. Last and final thing I wanna show you is the effect that all you guys asked me about is how to get my lights going opposite of each other, fanning the room side to side. This is super simple to do. We're gonna go ahead and trigger our color strobe because I don't think I programmed the color by itself. I should have done that, but I didn't. So let's go ahead and program our color strobe. I'm gonna go ahead and just hit color here so this one starts strobing. And I'm gonna move these lights to full. So now we have our different colors changing. I wanna cover more of the dance floor area. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a prism. Go ahead and bring this up to 20. Boom. Okay, now I have a prism, I have these lights changing colors, I have my moving heads changing colors. Now we're going to create an effect. Want to make sure that when you're creating an effect, you trigger the two lights that you want to affect. Now, as you guys can see, my color effect is trigger, which is acting on this light. Don't touch that, leave that alone. We're going to go ahead and program a pan and a tilt. And the way I do that side to side effect is I just draw a straight line like so. I'm going to actually do two points. Two points is actually easier than drawing a straight line. I'm gonna go ahead and press play. And there you guys see that my lights are going side to side. But I wanna move this bar until it's actually hitting the dance floor because I don't want it behind me. So I'm gonna move this, move this. Still not there, still not there. Is it here maybe? Yeah, there it is. Boom. So right now, it's going side to side. There you guys see. Now I have that side to side effect that everybody loves to see in the video. What I recommend you do is you take a gig, you show up super, super early, get everything set up, and then you start programming your scenes. Once you program them once, the only things that I edit are my spotlight and my room default, which just sets the color on my facade and uplight. Now, sometimes you will have to offset these. Um, I don't have the offset here because I already set offset these within the actual light. You can actually invert the pan and tilt within the lights that's something that you can do in your own time uh, I'm not gonna do it here because these are already offset sometimes they might go together which you will see a offset button on here now before we exit out we have to remember to save so we're gonna save this as side to side save boom we're gonna go back to our effect we're gonna trigger sides channels save and now we're gonna create a scene side color all right and now if i toggle everything off everything's going to be off and if we toggle side side you guys are going to see that it's going to toggle side to side additionally you can trigger these backwards and then save it as a scene what do i mean by that so we're going to go ahead and press color strobe our lights are going crazy we got a color strobe going we're going to go into effects and we're going to hit side to side and now our lights are going side to side we're going to save this new scene and we're gonna color this, and we're gonna title this Color Side Strobe. So now we have a color strobe just on the dance floor, just like that. And if we wanna have a color side to side, all we do is that right there. And that's how easy and simple it is to program your DJ light shows using the Airstream DMX Bridge. As you guys saw, it's not that complicated to do. Yes, it does take some time to get everything programmed. You are gonna have to sit down at home the first couple of times and just mess around with it, figure out what your lights do and what kind of effects you wanna create. Some people are really creative and they come up with some awesome shows using this Airstream DMX. Bros, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Don't forget, before you leave, we are doing a giveaway for this DDJ SB3. In order to be entered to win, you gotta hit that like button, be subscribed to this channel, and you gotta follow me on Instagram. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know down in those comments below. Do not call me. Do not text me asking me for tech support. Let me know down in the comments below. That way, people can chime in. They might 
might be able to help you faster than I can. And lastly, if you want to support my channel and show me some love so that I can keep making awesome videos like this one for you, please check out my merch down below. Alternatively, you can download my DJ sound effects, my DJ planning forms, my TV visuals, all in the description of this video. Support my channel so I can keep bringing you awesome content. Please like this video if you like this, subscribe if you're new around here, and if you really want to help me out, don't forget to turn on that bell so that you can be notified next time we do another DJ Tips and Tricks video. Signing off, DJ Bar. Stay awesome, bros. Peace.